to my sewing YouTube channel, Sewing in Switzerland. So today is a little different. I do like to bring out the odd vlog where I fill you in on any kind of sewing news or anything that is particularly, you know, happening in the sewing community. And over the last couple of weeks, there has been a bit of a controversy, a bit of a blunder with the sewing pattern company Tilly and the Buttons. So I just want to recap very quickly what has happened and go over some historical points as well and then look at the reactions that this incident has had and how people responded to that and then I will also present you with some other company recommendations that you may or may not be familiar with. So firstly we are without dogs today, they are somewhere downstairs chilling with my husband unfortunately so I'm hoping someone makes an appearance and comes to say hi at some point. So let's get into it. So basically what happened was Tilly and the Buttons released this new pattern called Esty and it's a co-ord pattern so essentially you get you know two patterns for, for one price and there's happened to be a top with kind of side bust starts there, like just straps, like a camisole, a woven camisole. And then these shorts or full length trousers. And so this is where the problem arises, or the problem arose. The photo as part of their promotional release of the plus size model has been heavily, heavily criticized. So, the photo of the plus size model, and I'll put the picture up here, here, is she's wearing, she's beautiful, beautiful model, nobody is saying anything otherwise, but she's wearing these green trousers and they are very, very ill-fitting, considering it's a brand new pattern release and this, this poor woman, these trousers are cutting into her tummy, you can kind of see where that is is very uncomfortably sitting. You can tell even as a beginner sewist that it should not be looking like how it does. And then it's too tight around the crotch area and it's kind of rising up and it just, it looks very uncomfortable, a little bit painful I would say. And it just doesn't, it doesn't look great. And so a lot of people flooded to the comment section on the pattern release on Instagram and said, goodness, wait, <laughs> what's going on here with this pair of trousers? This doesn't make me confident as a plus size sewist that I want to make these shorts or these trousers. And another bone of contention was that there were numerous photos of the this slimmer model in various kind of different poses. So you've got the back angle, you've got multiple different um, outfits that she was wearing from that pattern. Whereas the plus size model only had this one outfit and there wasn't like a full back view. There was also no version of her wearing any shorts, which was a bone of contention because people quite rightly said that they would like to see the all of the patterns available and how that looks on the model, not just one view essentially. So it was flooded with comments from fat sewists saying, look, you're not, you're not listening. Like you, you've released this pattern and it looks terrible. It's, it's not fitting that model. Why is this? Why have you done this? So then in the comments section, Tilly and the Buttons, released a statement and I will read it to you. I've written it down so it's verbatim here. And she said, yes, we could have benefited from an additional round of toiling and fitting for the green trousers sample. Unpo unfortunately, multiple fittings is not feasible, bracket, and not usually necessary, close bracket. Since the shoot and external testing stage with makers of different shapes, we've improved the pattern, lengthening the front crotch and adding more room at the tummy. We also have some free, okay, I'll that again. <laughs> Hello, 
thanks for the kiss. We also have some free fitting content scheduled for anyone who needs it, since all body shapes are different. We think Sophie looks gorgeous in the set and we loved having her model for us. So, there's, there's a lot to unpack here, so let's kind of take it sentence by sentence. So, firstly, she said we could have benefited from more toiling and fitting, but unfortunately multiple fittings is not feasible bracket and not usually necessary M bracket. And a lot of people had a problem with this statement. It is, it or it reads as very passive aggressive, very fat phobic. And that's essentially because larger sized sewists require more than one fitting normally. You can't just make something and then it fits you perfectly because there's a lot more to take into consideration when you're customizing or hacking the garment or the pattern so that it fits comfortably around your tummy so that you have enough room to move comfortably. It's very important. So multiple toils and fittings are almost always necessary. So that immediately raises red flags because it feels like Tilly in the Buttons does not know her customer base or her fat customer base at all to come out with this generalized statement and immediately it was flooded with comments saying, well, actually, no, I, I do need to toil multiple times. That is completely normal. And another thing that struck me is the model has modeled for Tilly and the Buttons previously. She was on the cover of the Mabel uh, shirt and dress. So they have her measurements, they're aware of her size, and yet they still couldn't produce a block that, that fitted her. And then secondly, to release a pattern and just kind of throw it out there when it clearly doesn't even fit your model suggests that there is something wrong with the pattern. So it feels very slapdash. It feels a lot like the fat sewist community has just been left as an afterthought and not really taken into consideration at all and kind of a bit insensitive. Oh, well, if they don't notice, you know? It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't read well, if I'm honest. And that's my personal take on it. And these are all my personal opinions. I feel like I need to make that very, very clear here. So the next, the next part. Since the shoot and external testing stage with makers of different shapes, I would like that evidenced. Personally, if I was telling you the buttons, I would be saying, you know, this person, this person, and this person, and all these other people, they were makers, you know, because it clearly reads that you or Tilly and the Buttons as a company have not employed any fat people within the consideration of this pattern. If you're not employing fat people, then you're not going to get a correct pattern. If you're not drawing on their knowledge as a fat person, then you're not going to get the correct information. So why are fat people not being employed by Tilly and the Buttons to get this this issue right. If you know that your pattern isn't going to work for a fat person, either don't release it as, you know, something that would, or consult and pay fat sewists in the community. It's really, I don't think it's a big deal. So, yeah. Then we also have some free fitting content scheduled for anyone who needs it. If you have to take apart a pattern to make it fit you, in a very basic way, then that pattern is not designed for you. It's really quite that simple. So as of yesterday, I did kind of have a look through on the website and a blog has come out about doing a full tummy adjustment. And you've basically got to take the, the to do that, you've got to take the entire top piece apart in two different places, make it wider and make it kind of hoik it up as well. If you're a beginner sewist, which is Tilly and the Buttons entire USP, then you should not be having to do that, you know? You should be able to, as a fat sewist, go to a sewing pattern company and buy something that fits your body. So it very much feels like the pattern was taken at a straight size, at a small size, using a small block, and then just kind of made bigger without 
any consideration onto how that would actually fit a fat body, you know, which you simply can't do that with a pattern. That is not how you make a pattern. You, you, you just can't do that, you know, you have to uh, take into consideration the curves and, and everything else that comes with making a pattern. You can't just increase it. It doesn't work like that. So it kind of feels like that was what happened and then it gets a bit passive aggressive i thought you know we think sophie looks gorgeous no one is saying that the model isn't beautiful she is she's absolutely stunning but the clothes that have been put onto her body do not fit her that is not the fault of the model that is not the model's problem she's done nothing wrong you know we're not saying she's not beautiful no one is attacking the model at all or attacking the fact that the garments that you have put on her do not fit her. It's nothing about the model. The model is there to show the clothes and the clothes do not look good because they do not fit. So, you know, it felt a bit <laughs> passive aggressive there. So I've made some notes on what I thought of the situation. So, and again, I would love to hear what your thoughts are about this and your opinions on this entire matter. Very keen to read other people's responses. So my main takeaway from this is why was the fit not fixed before the pattern was released? Why would you release something that isn't finished, that isn't correct? It's, it's very much like, I, I've seen this analogy used in the comments section and it's a pretty good one. It's like if you go to a restaurant and you order some food and that food comes out and it's only half cooked, you wouldn't say, well, they gave it their best shot. You know, you'd send it back and you would say, please cook my food. Like you would expect to purchase the, the item that you should be getting. And it is the same with this pattern. You know, you shouldn't receive something that's only half baked. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So I did actually purchase this pattern because I wanted to see the pattern for myself. I wanted to see, you know, what it was like. The instructions, considering it's two items, the instructions are a little bit scanty. So normally with Tilly and the Buttons, you get this kind of gorgeous, quite, quite hefty booklet with it. And it goes into a lot of detail with a lot of pictures. And I just kind of found that some of the items, some of the the instructions were put under as one point whereas previously i would have seen that as two points so the very first one for instance is line up this seam then line up the seam on the other side and it just doesn't read very easily and it's like well if this is your first project as a beginner i would probably pack away the machine it it's not it's not one of their best i will i will say that and again personal opinion so, just consult my notes. I don't have my glasses, so we're real close here, but I don't want to like miss anything, so I've had to bring my paper with me. So, so someone did mention on the comments, and I can't fact check this, I do not have the skills or the ability to do so, but they've said that they think that the photos of the model, the plus size model, had been photoshopped to remove the natural lines and folds because it looked too smooth on her body. I can't corroborate that, I can't confirm if that's correct or not, but I thought it was an interesting point and worth making. So, also, yeah, that's another thing I wanted to mention, the price. There has been a significant price hike with this pattern. It's going for £19 sterling, no, £19.50, almost 20 quid. So it's it's a lot. It's gone up by quite a lot. And I know that the economy is down and the cost of living is up. But it feels like you're getting less care, less concern, especially about fat sewists for more money, which mm, doesn't sit very well with me. So I'm gonna skip ahead and I had a look at all the comments and where the comments came from. And I will say that I was very disappointed to see that on this particular comment section, 
there was a comment from the pattern um, selling company, the fold line. They don't make their own patterns, but they, you know, sell everybody else's patterns. <laughs> I can't think of the word off the top of my head. The shop, the pattern shop, okay. Fold line are very big in the sewing community. They're very, very well known. They have a large database. Um, they have a lot of blog, blog posts, so it's a really good place for information about you know what to make for summer what to make for spring you know all of the skirt patterns there's a really good database of knowledge however i have had previous problems with the fold line and this is my main reason why i won't use it personally is they have a whole blog post on basically saying that women should dress more flattering and dress for your shape your shape and then they go into great detail with illustrations about what shape your body is and they compare that to fruits and vegetables so I can't believe I'm saying this in 2023 so it's like is your body an apple is your body a strawberry I don't know, Minimalist Machinist on Instagram has some really uh, amusing takes on this and there's a lot of people that go around calling themselves potatoes now which is very amusing and it makes light of what is a pretty crummy situation. I mean, you know, I am, I consider myself a feminist, but I am an adult woman, I'm not a strawberry. I, <laughs> and I certainly wouldn't you know, if I was if I was a man, I certainly wouldn't go around saying, yeah, no, I can't wear that in a pair. It's just, it's a bit nonsensical and it's very fat phobic, I think. And then it's all this idea that you should dress for that shape, to honour that shape. And you should wear something that is flattering. And flattering essentially means thinner. You should wear something that makes you look smaller, which I just do not agree with I hate the word flattering with like such sincere loathing I just can't stand it so it's this idea that you know you should be flattering for yourself and for you know the gaze of others it's just I could do a whole video on why I hate the word flattering but moving on so the fold line have commented on this this big um, Instagram post with all these comments of Pat Sowers saying this isn't good enough and calling it out and they've just disregarded that they've not acknowledged that at all and they've just put something along the lines like yay SD can't wait for summer and I just thought that was so tone deaf like there are so many fat people out there that are going to come to your company and buy patterns in their size from you and here you are just kind of barreling through them like they're not there just pretending you can't see this instead of acknowledging it or just kind of not getting involved so yeah shan't be personally buying from the fold line i don't think well i wouldn't have anyway because i don't agree with that shaped blog post that they have so yeah that you know it's it's a very sensitive topic and I just thought that was very tone deaf to the situation. So I'll just check my notes to if I've not missed anything. So the other thing that came out of this new pattern, this SD pattern, is people were very, very quick. And so is so sharp, you know, we're gonna immediately recognize a pattern if we've made it before. And it was flooded with messages saying, this is very similar to another pattern that you have called the Sophia trousers. Is it the same pattern? And the Tilly and the Buttons, they released a video and they listed all the differences between the SD trousers and the Sophia trousers. Both have an elasticated waist, they're kind of wide leg trousers. There's, there's not a lot of difference. I think if you purchased one you'd be very disappointed if you already had the other so I have written down the differences I've done my homework all right so I'll tell you what the difference is that Tilly and the Buttons listed first they said that the leg shape was wider with the SD I at first glance I can't really see a difference 
but I've not made this supply of trousers. So if you have and you want to weigh in, go for it. Go for it. So I can't corroborate that one. I'm tempted actually to make them <laughs> just to be petty and see how similar they really are. So then it goes on to say, or Tilly and the Buttons in the video go on to say, SD has three lengths, full, short and crop. Okay, you could do that with the sapphire though, you know, you could hack a little bit off or just fold it up to knee length and make your knee or, you know, it's just a pair of elasticated trousers, so they're straight leg, there's not a lot in it, so I don't think that's really much of a saleable difference. But, you know, I'll take it. So the, ne the next thing is that SD has patch pockets on the back. Okay. You could add patch pockets to a pair of trousers, arguably. They're not like inseam pockets. Um, they're just kind of, you stick them on the back. Okay, I'll take it. The next one they said that the rise is slightly different again i can't corroborate this but considering the amount of problems that people are having with the rise i think that's not a great thing and then <laughs> this one cracked me up i must say i found this very funny in the video Tilly and the buttons they say also the top stitching is different because there is actually top stitching on the s on the sd I don't think that top stitching is really a saleable difference. You can add top stitching to any garment. You just stitch on the top. It's, you know, it's not, that is, it's a design feature. It's not part of the pattern. So that is nonsense. I'm disregarding that one. So, okay. So this is where it gets a little bit hairy now. And I just want to check I've not missed anything. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people also did say that the SD pattern, I thought this was quite interesting, is only two pattern pieces. And literally two pieces and then you kind of like fold the top of the waistband down and add the elastic. So maybe that's part of the reason why there's a lot of problems with it because there's only two pieces. You can't have the t two of the same pieces for a smaller body and a bigger body and expect them to all work like that, you know. But that said, there are very similar patterns out there that are designed for much bigger bodies and they are designed with tummies and thighs and bottoms all in mind and they are perfectly designed and tailored and, you know, pattern tested to the hilt for larger bodies and I will let you know them some of the names of them in a minute so yeah what I wanted to get on to and what I just wanted to cover was some of the responses to the SD pattern or some of the responses rather to the fat sewists in the community have been a little bit I don't want to call it out and say tone deaf but they've certainly been a little bit, you know, hairy, shall we say. So the fat sewing community came forward onto this pattern and they said, you know, this is not good enough. This is not good enough. This is not something that we as fat people can wear, you know, and you must do better. You must change it. This is, this is, you know, fat phobic at best. It's very upsetting. And then people kind of flocked to these comments and I will say that there's mainly the thin kind of sewists within that community saying actually you're being too mean, you're being too harsh, you're being unnecessarily over the top and the fat sewing community responded saying this is gaslighting, this has nothing to do with you as a person or Tilly, the owner of the company, as a person. This is to do with the pattern company itself, not making a good enough pattern, not being good enough for the the fat, the fat sewing community. And quite rightly, you know, you would call out any sewing house that had done that previously. 
And I will say this is not the first time that Tilly and the Buttons have been in controversial waters with the fat sewing community. So I would say about three, maybe four years ago now, it's definitely before the pandemic, which kind of still feels like it was only yesterday. But yeah, anyway, they, the company turned around and they said that they didn't want to make patterns for larger bodies because it was too time consuming, it was too costly, it wasn't worth, you know, them doing it. And the community kind of very much called them out on this and said, this is awful, you know, why are you so resistant to size expansion? Why are you marginalizing us? We're here with our, you know, with our money and we're waving it around saying, we want to give you this money, give us a pattern. And they, as a company kind of said that and they dragged their heels and they were the last company to, the last indie company to come out with plus size patterns. So from the get go, there's been a very large bone of contention and this went on for quite a while. And the response back then from Tilly and the Buttons as a company was very, very disappointing and very tone deaf to the, the fat sewing community. So this is the second time, this is like their second strike already. So, you know, that residual and historical anger and upset is probably still sitting with a lot of people, as you can well imagine. So, yeah. So to then receive messages from the, the wider sewing community in this chat and hear that you're perhaps, you know, it's all in your head, not it's all in your head, but you know, you're making a big deal out of nothing. Arguably no, you know, fat people deserve sewing patterns just as much as thin people, you know? There's really nothing to to say further on that matter. If they're, if they're producing a pattern for a certain size range, then it needs to fit that body, you know? That's, the amount of messages that were very, very supportive for Tilly, but they also spoke to Tilly as if she was an individual. She's not an individual. She is a business owner and Tilly and the Buttons is not an individual person. It is a team of people that the, the founder, Tilly, employs. They have a property that they even rent, or purchase, I don't know, in central London, rent is not cheap. And you can actually, you can even, why is that? <sighs> My AirPods switched off for a second, but we're good, we're good. It's all okay. So as I was saying, you can actually go onto company's house and you can tie up, you know, Tilly and the buttons in and it will come up with their net profits, their, financial information, you know, this is not a singular person. And everybody refers to Tilly as if she is an individual. And yeah, she's, um, sure, a great person, but we are not dealing with Tilly. We're dealing with Tilly and the Buttons, which is a company that should provide what it says on the tin, which is a pattern for a fat sewist and not a mockery of what, essentially. So, you know, while I'm not attacking her as a person, the company should do better. But a lot of the messages were directed to her individually, you know, and she was a persona, like a, a public figurehead. She was on the sewing bee several years ago. You know, she founded this company. There is a very individual presence around her as if she is an individual person, but she's not just someone selling, I don't know, something at a local fair or a couple of things on Etsy. She is a sewing pattern house company, you know, and she brings in a fair amount of money or they bring in as a company and they have a marketing person on the team. They have a pattern designer, a pattern grader on the team. You know, this is not something that should have got past each step. And then with the marketing communications that came out, that should have been better. That. <laughs> It should have been way better than what it was. It was insensitive at best and fatphobic at worst, you know? So 
that is quite upsetting so you know you have to think of them as a company and not as an individual person and you can find all this information you know about the company on the internet it's public knowledge it's a limited company it's all available so I recommend people to take a look at that before they start you know sending hugs and feeling sorry for a person who they believe is being attacked when they're not you know, it's just sharing information from the bat sewing community that she's not done a good enough job or not that she's not done a good enough job, sorry, a little slip of the tongue, but they as a company have not done a good enough job. And it would be exactly the same if it was simplicity or, gosh, I don't know, one of the big houses, you know, Vogue patterns suddenly produce something like that. There'd be, you know, questions raised and the exact same situation would follow. So it's not aim there's no hate aimed at a single person at all so yeah so i will mention that fat people felt that they were being portrayed as angry or aggressive or you know overly emotional which is you know at the very basic gaslighting and what we need to do within the community is say okay these are the opinions of this marginalized group and this is how they feel and we need to support them validate them vouch for them you know be allies for them not just turn around and be like you're being a bit harsh like no no we need we need to support them and not gaslight them so that is about my thoughts on the matter actually i've covered all the points that i wanted to make so i want to put it out to you guys what do you think what are your thoughts you know they did so a statement was released a few days later saying that they will reshoot the pattern of the the plus size model and reproduce the the pictures the photo shoot or whatever but i feel like the damage is done i feel like the way that they need to come back from this is to say we're listening to the community and we're going to employ some fat people and we're going to make sure that you know they're involved heavily in future testing processes and we're going to look into creating patterns for bigger bodies whether that means training horses or you know <laughs> education that's the only thing that would make it better education and the employment of fat cellists would help rectify this situation rather than just promising to reproduce the photos, which is the bare minimum, isn't it, really? So, now I want to recommend some amazing indie companies for plus size. And that is, just checking, we've got a storm. We've had storms all day, it's very hot here. I think there's another one rolling in. So yeah, I just want to give you some um, some extra companies to go away and look at, you know, if that's something that you're looking to sew or looking to support. So the two main ones that, that make patterns for large bodies that are really, really well tested, really well known, really well liked by the larger sewing community, and that is Cashmerant. Hello again and Moona and Ward. So I'll link their websites in the... <laughs> it's very hard to call this and it with a dog, but at least we've got one back. She has returned. So yeah, Cashmerat and Moona and Ward, and I'll link their websites in the description. And so there's another one called So Outdoorsy, and they're kind of garnered towards hiking clothing or like outdoor clothes, like activity clothes walking clothes, whatever, active wear, that's the word I'm looking for. So they go up to currently a size 42, but they said if you're outside of this size range, you can contact them and they will grade to your size, which is pretty phenomenal, you know, from a small company, like this is what I expect from Tilly and the Buttons. So yeah, and they've also, the part of their tagline is that they've designed with large bodies as the focus so that minimal adjustments are required. 
which is what we want to see you know we want to see that we don't want to see how to do a full tummy adjustment how to take the pattern apart and put it back together so it fits your body there should be you know the very basic requirement from from a sewing pattern company and we've got a second dog hello so next up uh, just a couple of indies that are well known in the indie pattern community <laughs> thank you for the kisses so we've got Helen's closet who now goes up to a size 34 we've got the closet core patterns they go up to a size 32 and so how seven go up to a size 34 so some really good indie ones in there to to take a look at and get involved with and I see we've got some silly dogs in the <laughs> getting involved so I hope that this wasn't too much of a, a tense or controversial topic and I would really love to know what people's thoughts on the matter are and what you know if you think it could have been handled better or you know if you think that I'm wrong like I'm happy to to hear other points of view don't get me wrong like that's not a problem just let me know what you think so yeah that's the latest controversial news within the sewing community and I would like to thank you for watching this video and if you have not already I'd very much like it if you liked and subscribed to my channel <laughs> me and the bugs would <laughs> really like that <laughs> And I will wish you all a great day and see you soon. Bye.